Excavations in an ancient cemetery are a common practice for archaeologists, where only they do not have to dig up valuable exhibits. However, this cemetery was not ordinary. Watch the video until the end and you will see the oldest mummy from Egypt, where the Sumerians drank beer and the image of an unknown naked god. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. Prehistoric Ostrich Egg Omelette I have already talked about ancient dinosaur eggs more than once. I spoke about chicken eggs, but how could I miss the most ancient ostrich eggs? Israeli archaeologists found eight ostrich eggs in the sand dunes of Nizana in the Negev. Their age and preservation is amazing from about 4,000 to 7,500 years. If they were kept in the refrigerator, then we would have the opportunity to cook the most ancient ostrich egg omelette. More than 5,000 years ago, there was a camp of ancient nomads. Archaeologists have found flint and stone tools, burnt stones and shards of pottery. But the most important find is ostrich eggs. The dry climate of this region has helped preserve artifacts to this day. Until the 19th century, there were many wild ostriches in this region. It was a natural habitat for them. Ostrich eggs have been an important raw material and food source throughout their existence. Multiple finds testify to this. One ostrich egg replaces 25 chicken eggs. With such an omelette, you can feed a huge family and saturate them with all the useful minerals. It is interesting that archaeologists found a lot of ostrich egg shells, but they did not come across ostrich bones. Most likely, people in ancient times avoided direct contact with ostriches and preferred only stolen eggs for food. This find of eight eggs supports the hypothesis that people deliberately brought eggs here and cooked them on a fire. However, not only sand helps to preserve artifacts in their original form. Swamp People in Europe Throughout Europe, archaeologists have found hundreds of mummified people in swamps. The first finds of this kind even scared archaeologists because the preservation of the deceased was amazing. However, later scientists were able to understand how the process of mummification takes place in the marshland. At the same time, the researchers realized that all the people buried in the swamps were victims of ritual murders. Scientists have studied more than a thousand swamp people found throughout Europe. Fragments of skeletons and bones, skin and soft tissues were studied in detail. Forensic experts found traces of cuts and stab wounds on all the remains. Wounds were not inflicted with the intent to quickly kill a person. All injuries were inflicted with a specific purpose. Animal bones and weapons were also found nearby. All this points to ritual killings and offerings. Ritual killings and burials in swamps date back to 5000 BC. At least at the moment these were the oldest finds. Archaeologists found the oldest swamp mummies in Scandinavia. The earliest ones date back to the Middle Ages, but they look more like an accident than a sacrifice. Such a mummification process is considered natural and the most accessible, so to speak. If a person falls into a swamp and drowns, then nature will do everything itself. And next, I will tell you about the mummy more usual in our understanding. The oldest mummy and the ruins of an unknown city in Egypt, archaeologists made two interesting discoveries at once, an unknown city of the era of the Roman Empire and a mummy completely covered in gold. It is currently the oldest mummy found in the country. If you didn't know, it has recently been illegal in Britain to call a mummy. Now it's a mummified person. Therefore, be more tolerant of the mummified personality of Tutankhamun and others, please. The ruins of the ancient city were discovered on the east bank of the Nile, not far from the Luxor. In addition to the buildings, the researchers found metallurgical workshops with various utensils, two dovecotes, Roman copper and bronze coins. Approximate age of, of buildings 2nd and 3rd centuries AD, the times of the late Roman Empire. The uniqueness of the city is that usually archaeologists manage to find temples and tombs and here the whole city. But in the Saqqara necropolis near Cairo, archaeologists found a mummy in a limestone sarcophagus which is 4,000 300 years old. 
At the moment, it is the most complete and oldest mummy found in Egypt. And as we already know, if the mummy is covered with gold, then it did not belong to an ordinary person. The mummy has a name, Gakasheps. In addition to this tomb, four more of about the same age were found. Scientists preliminarily consider that they belong to the highest palace officials, and one of them belongs to a judge and writer named Fatek. In order not to offend mummies, do not forget that these are mummified remains or a mummified person. In recent years, a lot of interesting and fascinating finds have been found in Egypt. In terms of the scale of the discoveries, this is reminiscent of the discovery of the tomb of Tutankhamun common at the beginning of the last century. All these events will raise the level of tourism in the country to an even greater one. While archaeologists are clearing their finds of sand, I suggest you see the place where the ancient Sumerians ate. Canteen of Ancient Sumerians on the territory of Iraq, in the ancient city of Lagash, archaeologists have found the remains of an ancient public dining room. And more than 5,000 years ago, there was a full-fledged indoor building where chefs prepared a large amount of food and local workers or ordinary residents came here to eat. Maybe it was even free for them. The researchers found something similar to a clay refrigerator, benches, an oven, and the remains of dishes where food was even preserved. Finding the tavern is actually a big discovery. This tells us that there was a middle class of people in this region. In ancient Lagash, in addition to the elite and slaves, there were ordinary hard workers who could come to the tavern after a working day and drink beer with a piece of meat or fish. The area of the city of Lagash is 450 hectares. It was one of the largest settlements in southern Iraq in the 3rd millennium BC. In addition to the dining room, archaeologists found a pottery shop with six ceramic kilns, a residential building that had a kitchen and a bath, and what looked like a shop. Ancient Roman relief depicting a god in the north of England, not far from the defensive wall of Hadrian, there was a fortified military camp of Indolanda. It was built back in 85 AD to defend against the Celtic tribes of the Picts and Brigantes from Scotland. The fort existed until the 4th century AD, and at this place, amateur archaeologists found a sculptural relief depicting a naked man with a spear next to a horse or donkey. Archaeologists have been excavating here for more than 100 years, and during this time, they have found thousands of artifacts and the unique ones are exhibited in the British Museum. A few years ago, 25 wooden writing tablets dating back to the 1st 2nd centuries of our era were found there, which are comparable in importance to Novgorod birch bark ladders. Excellent preservation was achieved thanks to the clay soil. Now you know that sands, clays, and swamps are the best places to preserve artifacts. If you want to leave something for your descendants or add work to archaeologists in the future, then bury it in clay, in sand, or in a swamp. And we will return to the study of the ancient plate. According to archaeologists, usually when people are depicted naked, this indicates their belonging to the gods. It is not customary to draw an ordinary cavalry warrior next to a horse without pants. This man has a spear in his hands. The spear was the main attribute of the god of war, Mars. However, some features of the head look like wings, and this is more like the god of travel, Mercury. The horse and donkey were also often painted next to Mercury. But most of all, archaeologists like to interpret the finds according to the place of their discovery. Near this place was an ancient cavalry barracks. The locals could portray an unknown god who had the characteristics of Mars and Mercury. But if archaeologists fail to find something similar in the future, then this image of a god can be attributed to an artist's mistake. It's good that these amateur archaeologists were not fine like our next heroes, also from Britain. 18 years in prison and 1.2 million pounds fine. In some countries, there are very strict rules for treasure hunters and amateur archaeologists. If, for example, you find a treasure trove or some ancient artifact and do not report it to the government, then you will face a prison or a huge fine. In our story, two treasure hunters received both a prison sentence and a huge fine. So, in 2019, George Powell and Leighton Davis found a treasure in Hertfordshire, approximately 5th century AD. It consisted of a 9th century gold ring, a dragon hat bracelet, a silver bar dating from the 5th century, a crystal pendant and over 300 coins, some of which date back to the reign of King Alfred the Great. 
the treasure was valued at 3 million pounds. However, historians consider this treasure to be priceless, which it seems to me added even more problems to amateur archaeologists. Since 1996, there has been a law in the UK that states that if you find ancient artifacts that are more than 300 years old, even one coin, you must report it to the appropriate authority. When Powell and Davis found the treasure, they decided to sell everything on the black market. They were arrested when they were selling the last batch of jewelry. They now face 8 and 10 years respectively plus a 1.2 million pounds fine that they must pay by this spring. If they do not pay, then their term in prison will increase by 4 and 5 years. It would seem that the laws are very harsh, but there is one more fact. If they had immediately told the government about the treasure, then after studying and evaluating the property, the country's authorities would have paid each of them 500,000 pounds sterling. As I understand, these guys were just greedy. Disguised Doors in the Great Wall of China Millions of people visit the Great Wall of China every year, but researchers continue to study it and find something new. Recently, employees of Tianjin University found 130 camouflage doors. The trick was disappearing or passing through the Chinese wall was demonstrated by the magician David Copperfield, and it turns out there is some truth in that. The doors are so carefully disguised that they are almost invisible from the outside, and if you stand next to the wall and watch, you can see how merchants or soldiers approach the wall and disappear, or on the contrary, appear from nowhere. Previously, this effect was little studied by official history and these doors were not given much attention. To see the hidden passages in the wall, the researchers had to shoot in high resolution. The doors fit so well into the wall that sometimes even the masonry coincided, while the passages were so large that a small herd could pass through. Previously, it was believed that there was no passage in some sections of the wall, but now we understand that there are passages everywhere just somewhere they are carefully disguised. Such cunning passages and the very construction of the wall, 21,000 kilometers long, gave the Chinese a huge advantage in antiquity. Most likely, this is not the last surprise that awaits us while exploring the Great Wall of China. And now, let's go to Italy to a creepy cemetery. The Ominous Cemetery of the Revenants the next find may scare you a little. In the central part of Italy, archaeologists have excavated in the cemetery. In fact, this is a common practice in the world of archaeology. But not all cemeteries are 1,600 years old, and not all of them are associated with legends about revenants. So in local folklore, they called the resin from the graves of the dead. I wanted to say that in ancient times people were more superstitious than in our time, but I would most likely be mistaken. There have always been superstitious people, and human fear has always forced people to commit crazy acts. So in ancient Italy, people believed that the dead could rise from the graves, and so that it doesn't happen, the disease should be buried and a huge stone should be placed on top of him. I talked about a similar find in Denmark in one of my previous videos. So in Italy, in an ancient cemetery, the remains of children were found, whose bodies were crushed by stones. Some were buried with stones in their mouth. Archaeologists believe that this was part of some ancient ritual. They believed that the dead could become revenants, we know them better as zombies. Another evidence of this ritual is the remains of puppies, which were brought to the cemetery and buried with the children. Scientists have already managed to conduct a number of studies and concluded that most children died of malaria. And most likely, it was this disease that caused fear in people, and it seemed to them that a person could be resurrected. In those days, Christianity was gaining popularity in this region, but this did not stop people from believing in the uprising of the dead. There was a fear of the undead both among pagans and Christians. At the same time, many believed that witches could use revenants for their own selfish purposes. As I understand it, 1,500 years ago there were no dull moments in Italy. And the next final story for today will be about a real Thumbelina. 19th Century Thumbelina the story began in 1841 in Massachusetts in an ordinary family. A girl was born there, who certainly pleased her parents with an excellent appetite and was completely healthy. But at some point, the parents noticed that something was wrong with this girl. She completely stopped growing. The doctors only shrugged and declared that the girl was absolutely healthy, but most likely, she would forever remain the size of a child. Its dimensions were comparable to a child one and a half, two years old. 
Parents accepted this feature of the girl and raised her as if everything was fine with her. As a child, she planned to become a teacher, but her cousin invited her to participate in the midget show, where she became their queen. She was very popular, she constantly sang and danced. Such a hobby gave her great pleasure and brought her good money. At some point, the famous impresario Phineas Taylor Barnum drew attention to the girl Lavinia. He invited the girl to his place, where she attracted the attention of another midget who even proposed to her, but Lavinia refused because the guy was seven years younger than her. She gave her heart to another admirer of hers named Charles Stratton. In 1863, the couple got married. The ceremony was attended by former boyfriend George Nutt and the youngest daughter of the Warren family, Millie, who was also born small. Tickets for the ceremony cost $50, and there were about 10,000 guests. After the necessary time, the wife began to appear on the show with the baby. She never said that it was her child, but she did not deny it either. It turned out that all this was a peer of impresario Barnum. That way he warmed up the crowd. Every time they came to another city, he, to put it mildly, rented the child in one of the local shelters and after the show he gave the child back. Lavinia never got her own child. This was influenced by the case with her younger sister. Little Minnie was even shorter than her sister by 10 centimeters, but she married a taller man. Happiness was not long. A year later, she died from complications during childbirth. Later, Lavinia faced the death of her husband and already wanted to quit her shows, but the accumulated money was not enough for her to meet her old age. She continued her tour and met a new love there. Later, the couple returned to their hometown where they opened their own store. The Queen of Lilliput died in 1919, having lived to the age of 78. Read this video with your thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!